This video has been made possible by the Safe at Home Manitoba program. Hi, I'm Rebecca and I'm a registered dietitian. On a bitter cold Manitoba day, there's nothing quite like a warm and comforting bowl of soup. So today we're going to borrow a couple principles from Huga and we're going to make our own roasted tomato soup. If you've never heard of Huga before, the best way I can describe it is the Danish art of being cozy. And it's one of the reasons why Danes are among the happiest people in the world, despite having long, cold, and dark winters. So let's get started. For this recipe today, you're gonna to need about five tomatoes, four or five cups of cherry tomatoes. And I like to use tomatoes on the vine and annexy tomatoes for a variety, but Roma tomatoes work great, then you can use whatever tomatoes are your favorites. About five yellow onions, seven to 10 cloves of garlic, a drizzle of olive oil, two cups of milk or cream, depending on your preference, half a cup of Parmesan cheese, about two to three tablespoons of tomato paste, coarse ground sea salt, fresh cracked black pepper, and a handful of fresh basil. You can also take a look at the attached show notes to see a full recipe and a list of all the equipment that you're going to need for this recipe. We're going to preheat our ovens to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. And you can pause the video to gather all of the stuff that you need. All right, if you have everything ready to go, let's get started. So we're going to cut out the stem out of our tomatoes. And if you're missing warm summer days and fresh garden tomatoes, I've got a couple tricks to coax out a little extra flavor out of your grocery store tomatoes. The first trick is making sure that we are storing the tomatoes the right way. We don't want to store them in the fridge because that can zap a little bit of flavor out of them. We actually want to store them either on the counter, but not in direct sunlight, or we can store them in a dry cellar or pantry instead of storing them in the fridge. The other tip is we're going to roast our tomatoes for this soup rather than adding raw tomatoes and that's going to help encourage a little extra flavor out of them. Once we're done that, we're just going to put our tomatoes onto our cookie sheet and I've put a piece of parchment paper down first. Now if you're tempted to say open a can of tomato soup instead of cook at home and make your own tomato soup because of the cleanup. Putting a piece of parchment paper down first really helps with not having to scrub pans afterwards. So for me, it's definitely worth it to save a little bit of extra effort on the cleanup afterwards. Next, we are going to take the skin off our onions and quarter them. Roasting our onions is gonna help bring out a lot of delicious flavor to add to our soup caramelize the onions and make them a little sweeter. So I'm going to cut them first and then take the peel off because it's easier to cut them first. Of the tomatoes. I find it easier to cut the onions first and then peel them. Peel just comes off so much easier that way. One of the benefits of not having to cut our onions into little, little bits is less likely to cry while cutting your onions straight on the pan and roast away some of that bitter onion flavor and instead caramelize into sweet onions. Next, we're going to add our cloves of garlic. So all I'm gonna do is cut off the root at the bottom, peel 
peel off a little bit of the loose paper on the top here. And I'm going to add the cloves with a, still a little bit of paper on them directly to the pan. We can peel off the paper off of the cloves of garlic after they've roasted. It'll be a little easier to peel off then. Just taking that loose paper out any of that paper that wants to stay stuck to the garlic, that's okay, we'll get that later. We're going to add a nice drizzle of olive oil all over our veggies. As well as a sprinkle of that coarse ground sea salt. A little bit of that fresh cracked pepper. And this is what my tray of vegetables looks like. We're just gonna pop that into the oven. While our vegetables are roasting, I'm gonna recommend that you enjoy the full Huga experience. So grab a cup of coffee or tea, sit down and read a chapter of a really good book or maybe play a board game with your kids. And don't forget to light a few candles. While you are enjoying this experience, take some time and enjoy the smell of those delicious vegetables roasting. And I'll see you when they're done. My vegetables took about one hour of roasting at 400 degrees Fahrenheit and about three minutes of broiling at about 500 degrees. And they turned out beautiful. Huga isn't just about being cozy and eating good food, it's also about the experience of making food. So I hope that you took the time to enjoy the experience and the smell of those delicious vegetables roasting. You'll know that they're done roasting when there's a little bit of black on top. So we're gonna take a little bit of time to let the vegetables cool, then we're going to remove the really black pieces. We're also going to remove the skins from those pieces of garlic. And they should come off really, really easy for you. They're just popping off. Some of them might need a little bit of a squeeze. And make sure you've given your vegetables enough time to cool. If there's any parts that are really black, we can take those off. If it's just a little bit black, you can go ahead and leave it on. Once you've picked off all the little pieces of paper off the garlic and the black pieces off of the vegetables, we are going to pour our vegetables into a pot. So I'm going to use an instant pot, but you don't need one. You can either use a pot on the stove, or if you've let your veggies cool enough, you can actually pour them right into a blender, but only if you've let them cool enough. If they're too warm, while they're mixing in the blender, the heat can make the lid pop right off and make a huge mess in your kitchen. So please don't do that. not just the vegetables in but also all those little juicy bits into our pot there we go next I'm going to add two cups of my milk or cream I'm 
going to add a good handful of fresh basil, saving a little bit for later so we can use it as garnish. We're gonna add about half a cup of our Parmesan cheese. And again, we're gonna save just a little bit for garnish at the end. Going to add my tomato paste. Now I like to freeze my tomato paste in little one tablespoon measurements because I never seem to use an entire can of tomato paste all at once. So I'm gonna add those in as well. And then I'm gonna blend it up using an immersion blender. One of the number one reasons why someone does or does not like a food is the texture. So I'd recommend investing a little bit of time into making sure you blend this soup to how you like it. If you like your soup a little on the chunkier side, an immersion blender like mine works great. If you like your soup smooth like store-bought soup, you might prefer a quality blender to puree your soup instead. Once you're done blending, we're going to take a little taste and then we're going to see if we need to season it anymore. Not bad, that's pretty good. So I'm going to add just a little bit more of a pinch of salt. And then because we added the cold milk or cream and the frozen tomato paste, we're just going to let the soup warm up a little bit but not boil. While it's warming, we're going to prepare our garnish. So we're gonna take our basil and roll it up lengthwise along the leaf. And then we're going to take a knife and cut it little strips off, making sure you keep your fingers back. That way we have nice long pieces of basil that'll look beautiful for our garnish. And we have a little bit of Parmesan cheese left over as well. While this soup is good on its own, it's great when you balance this meal with some smorbrot. Smorbrot is a Danish open-faced sandwich on thin rye bread, but I'm gonna use pumpernickel today because it's much easier to find in Manitoba. There's a wide variety of different types of smorbrot. Today I'm gonna to make one with smoked salmon, one with soft boiled eggs, and another one with some Havarti cheese. So we're gonna take three pieces of dark rye bread. For the salmon one, I'm going to spread a little bit of mayonnaise. a few pieces of cucumber a few pieces of smoked salmon and this I was able to find at Superstore so this is easy to find in Manitoba a few pieces of fresh lemon squeeze that on here a little bit and that's gonna look nice a little bit of green onion and I'm going to top this off with a little bit of smoked paprika. Smorbrot usually has a thick layer of butter on it but for the egg one I'm going to add a little bit of avocado that I've mashed with a squirt of lemon juice. used half an avocado for this one. Add soft boiled egg. Couple pieces of tomato.
little bit of green onion. And a little bit of cracked black pepper. For the last smorebrod, we are going to use some butter. The Danes will lather it on fairly thick. You can do so if you want. I'm going to put a little bit of a thinner layer of butter on. And then we're going to alternate pieces of Havarti cheese with a few pieces of tomato. Again, we're going to top off with a little bit of green onion. And a little bit of pepper on this one as well. Other options for some toppings are some thin sliced radish. So I'm going to pair that one with my egg one. One trick you can do to really take this smorebrod up a notch is to butter one side of your bread Place it butter side down onto a pan, which is set on medium heat. You wanna toast it just until it's crispy. And you're gonna to wanna to watch pretty carefully with such a dark bread so you don't burn it. I'm actually not sure if it's still smorebrod if it's toasted, but it's really delicious. As our bread is toasting, it's getting really nice and soft on top. and getting just a little bit crispy you can hear that, a little bit crispy on the top. That's how I know it's done. So we're gonna add a little bit of mayo on top. Now my favorite of the three sandwiches is definitely the salmon one. If you've ever had a bad experience with salmon, doesn't mean that you'll forever dislike salmon. I've also had a bad experience with an oily smoked salmon that was definitely not my favorite. But I kept trying salmon until I found that I really like the smoked coho lox. It has a much nicer texture that I really enjoy. So sometimes you just have to keep trying a new food over and over until you find a version of it that you really like. And that can actually take about 15 or more tries sometimes. So I'm gonna put lots of cucumbers on there. And if I hadn't kept trying different types of salmon, I might not have found my new favorite sandwich. I'm gonna put all of that salmon on top. Sprinkle with a little bit of this nice smoked paprika. Good, good, good. Put some green onion on top. Now the Lemon is definitely a must with the sandwich. You can squeeze it a bit and then leave the pieces of lemon on for decoration, but you definitely want some nice citrus to balance the smoky flavor of the salmon. So squeeze it on there. You can leave the pieces on for decoration and you're done. All right, all we have left to do is dish out a bowl of soup and put our final touches on it. We're going to sprinkle the last little bit of Parmesan cheese onto our soup, as well as our strips of fresh basil. All right, there you have it. I hope you guys have enjoyed this new experience and hope you enjoy the food even more. Till next time. This video has been made in partnership with the RM of Le Brokery Leisure Services.